We basically submitted the script to everybody in town and nobody was interested. Typically in Hollywood, it's like they don't know what they want until they see it and they couldn't see it. Our sense of it was they were looking for something more like Porky's and it wasn't funny enough to them. A number of the studio executives who read the script, they said, we're not sure we want to go with a first time director. Also, we didn't have attached a major star, so it wasn't visualized as a star vehicle. It was like, unbelievable to us that no one could see this thing. We were running out of opportunities. And that's when a friend of ours gave it to the Geffen Company. David was the guy. I mean, he was the only guy who had some premonition of what it could be. And David Geffen did something so wonderful here. He said, take your time. The person who fits this role will have to be a movie star. When you find him, you'll know. Cast the best person for the part. And the best person came in very late in the equation. And of course, that was Tom Cruise. I remember getting the call saying, you gotta fly out, they wanna test you. I was down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, shooting The Outsiders at the time. So I thought, what, I gotta tell Francis, you know, that I'm gonna go and do it, <laughs> you know? I don't want him thinking my eyes somewhere else. I just remember Paul Wagner saying, look, you get on that airplane. And I flew to California. And he was just magnetic. But he was completely wrong for the part. No one saw him as Joel Goodson because he came in looking as follows greasy hair, a body of a almost professional wrestler. I had uh, a darkened tooth for the outsiders, and I think there's a tattoo on there that I couldn't get off right away. But I think being 19 years old at that point, I really understood where Joel was coming from and who he was. But he just did look like a suburban kid. And I said, hey, it's real simple. Let's do a screen test. Let's tell him to lose weight, get rid of those muscles to the extent he could, clean up his hair, and see if he looks believable, you know, with those minor modifications. We were as frustrated at that point, trying to find the actress who was gonna play Lana. Casting took a long time because Risky Business was gonna succeed if there was genuine chemistry between Lana and Joel. Okay, this is take one on scene 54. Whenever you want, Paul. Okay, ready, action. Good morning. Hi. Beautiful place here. Thanks. Thank you. Is this all yours? Um, yes. Actually, my, my folks. We were both summoned to do this audition at 6 o'clock in the morning. I remember walking in and seeing this guy, Tom. I was so excited about this uh, test. I don't think I slept at all. I had never met him before, and I remember walking over to him and saying, okay, you know what this is. This is the chemistry test. So, uh, let's get some chemistry going. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to get my stuff back. We was probably gonna be locked out of the apartment by now. <sighs> okay, okay. Yeah? Yeah, but, but will you do me a favor? Anything, Cookie? Don't steal anything. Yes, Cookie. And don't call me Cookie. My house in Los Angeles became the set. Tom and Rebecca did the screen test on video in my living room. I remember you sort of looked at me, a little furtive, a little questioning, a little nervous. He was probably already acting the part that was just perfect. And I thought, that's it, that's Joel. First of all, he was pretty confident. He made a choice on, on the reading, and then he did it again, and he took it in a slightly different direction. Let's, let's start over, okay. Which I thought for a 19-year-old kid to do, confident and a little bit bold. But I like the idea that he was going to bring something to the table, too. In the screen test, looking much more suburban, Tom was just great. And you know, the chemistry between Tom and Rebecca was fantastic. We were very, very excited, needless to say, when we saw that and, uh, and saw that Rebecca you know, could pull it off. Rebecca also brought clearly a physical presence, which was essential for this piece, so that she's the object of desire. I think we can play it up to the reading bar. Okay, now let's see how that... I'd actually never acted professionally on film or on TV before, and this was a lead role. 
So it was a little bit tricky, but it was one of those fateful kind of moments where I realized I just have to use everything that I've ever learned in my entire life to get this part. <laughs> my concept was get a guy like Cruz, get Rebecca. They're total unknowns, but sell them as movie stars. Just pretend that they're movie stars. Sell them that way and let the public come to you. You know, it's one of those pictures now that you cannot imagine two other actors being in.